On this DVD, I would like uh, to show you the power of classics. It will be about uh, how to study classics, how to use these classics in your development, in your chess trainings, in your chess education. Why uh, generally we use mostly um, classics on the start uh, of our chess education? First of all, classical examples are simpler. And I will show you how classics was developing from uh, more simpler, much more simpler examples to much more complicated uh, examples. Um, second uh, fact is that in modern games, everything is very unclear, you know, the plans are not so, uh, plans are not crystally clear at all. Uh, reason is simple. First of all, there are much more complicated uh, openings and uh, resistance is very tough in modern chess. My uh, good friend, great player and trainer, Leo Psachis, uh, a few years ago told me that he has now a big problem finding good uh, tests and good training examples for his pupils from modern games. Because, uh, as I told you, everything is more, much more complicated. The role of classics was uh, understand, uh, uh, was understandable for long period. And uh, top guys, top trainers were always using uh, a lot of classical examples. I remember when we had training camps with uh, um, Grandmaster uh, Evgeny Vladimirov, we had Soviet uh, uh, junior preparation before e European Championship. It was near Moscow. Uh, uh, just ba it was base of the Soviet Olympic teams in Novogorsk. And our trainer, uh, fantastic trainer of Soviet young team, uh, Anatoly Bichovsky, always invited great guys to our camps, like Yuri Averbach, like Mark Dvoretsky, especially like David Bronstein, who was not just the only who taught us uh, uh, a lot in chess. Uh, all others either were sharing their experience, but Bronstein was eager to share all his knowledge with young players. And so we are thankful to him till to this moment. And Bechowski for this camp invited uh, nobody else as a patriarch of Soviet chess, uh, great world champion Mikhail Botvinnik. And we analyzed a lot with him, we studied a lot, but what was the most interesting from his remarks, his uh, uh, advices, uh, was this fact. When we analyzed some of our games, we showed him some more complicated uh, games of uh, mine and of uh, Evgeny Vladimirov. Uh, Botvinnik used to say, oh, guys, you don't play this uh, kind of position as well, because everything is very typical, plans must be typical, plans must be studied. So, for example, for this uh, kind of structure, you have to take a uh, few games, like, for example, randomly like Levin Fish, Chekhover from Soviet Championship 1939, and game Goglidze uh, Konstantinopolsky from Soviet Championship 1936. Then you will understand well how to play this kind of positions. And he always stressed, it's not enough to see one game and, to, and you will not understand fully uh, the process, the technique of uh, handling this kind of positions. You have to take few games as much as possible. And it was very impressive for us. We were very surprised how it's possible that he knows everything, how to, uh, how to study and how to handle these positions on the best examples. So he was uh, absolutely fantastic uh, chess teacher. And it's not uh, strange at all that he created practically all uh, three great generations of Soviet players. First, first school of Botvinnik was with Karpov, second was Kasparov, and third and last one was with Vladimir Kramnik. Of course, other uh, top trainers like uh, 
Анатолий Биховски uh, helped, helped a lot, but influence of Botvinnik is uh, unforgettable. And, uh, you know, such experience, it has, it had no price for, for all of us. And I would like to start to show my own experience, what I studied, you know, because it's always important and interesting to understand why we have to study these classics and how we will use it, how, how it's influenced our development. Maybe some, something is uh, deeply inside or some, as you used to say, great trainer, Gena Sosonko, some unconscious knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it happens uh, that unconscious knowledge comes to help us, but uh, real knowledge is much more important. And I want to show you how I used these classics and how I profited out of these uh, classics myself. But it's always uh, was not clear how, how I will use it. I was studying a lot of classical games when I became young grandmaster. The same story uh, told me others like Gary Kasparov, like Vladimir Kramnik. Gary Kasparov, even on our uh, camps, always was talking about last uh, classical games, which he had seen. And on, I remember very well that during one camp in Estonia, he told me, look, I just uh, saw first ga first match uh, uh, Alekhin uh, Bogolubov. So this match is very much underestimated. Uh, it was one of the best matches for the World uh, Championship. They played so well. They, they had fantastic ideas both and both were playing every game for win so it was a story like that that a few years it it was end of 70s and i bought some nice books it was some russian classical uh, seria black seria we call it uh, games of the great players and I bought the book of Geller it was fantastic book absolutely fantastic book because Geller is very much underestimated player but he scored against such greats as uh, for example uh, Fischer Karpov uh, and some others was absolutely fantastic and his opening preparation and his opening strategy was so serious that All these top guys, even such top opening specialists as Robert Fischer, had huge problems playing against him. And so, when I was analyzing uh, games, going through the book, one of the games was how he had beaten world champion at that moment, Tigran Petrosyan. It was uh, some Soviet team uh, championship. It was French defense. It was Knights nice City Bishop before E5. And Tigran Petrosyan, of course, knew that Geller is absolutely uh, great uh, opening specialist, and he was somehow trying to avoid uh, Geller's preparation, Geller's knowledge in the main lines with C5. And he played uh, very, uh, let's say, solid positional system. Uh, Of course, here Queen G4 is met by uh, Bishop F8 even or G6, uh, Knight F3, uh, Queen D7. It is very complicated setup. When I was uh, playing myself uh, this position with White, I could never understand why Bishop A6 is wrong, because Bishop A6 is the main uh, idea of Black in this kind of structure. According to Capablanca rules, with pawns f7, e6, d5, it's necessary to try to exchange, to get rid out of this white squared bishop. So it's a, generally uh, one of the strategical ideas uh, in, uh, French, in French defense. Uh, um, I could not understand why it was not played anymore, because uh, bishop a6, knight a6, Queen d3, of course, and simply queen c8. And if white castles, then to play simply knight e7, castle, and then to play c5, or maybe take on c3, to reduce quantity of the pieces on the board, because black has some uh, space problems, to exchange few of them. And I don't think that it is some something real uh, in, this, in this 
situation for for white but these specialists which are playing this b6 probably they want to to come to this more complicated uh, situations to cast long even you know bishop d2 i like this this moves yet it was played few times even by bobby fisher uh, what is the reason of this move uh, that some players uh, and bobby fisher was himself like that are extremely um, uncomfortable when they obtain position with double pawns after bishop c3 b3 uh, they don't know what to do with this with this structure this structure seems to be uh, bobby fisher even explained it's some structure like a turtle <laughs> no it's very different to find it where to attack this this kind of uh, let's say uh, uneasy structures and for this reason, Bishop D2 is uh, became a very popular attitude and Bishop F8. Of course, here I'm always uh, making a joke when I discuss this retreat uh, that it's forbidden to show to the juniors because we teach juniors don't play two moves in the opening unless it's not necessary, unless this piece is, piece is not, not attacked, yes? Uh, and such move as bishop f8 is very difficult to explain for young players why we try to uh, uh, retreat with a developed piece which is uh, quite well placed on uh, on before but the reason is that uh, there are some uh, it can be some problem on the on the queen on the king side with some wise transfer of the knight, knight e2, for example, knight e2, knight, uh, knight f4, someday knight h5, attacking uh, a very vulnerable uh, squares in, in, black, in black position. So, and Gellert played a4. Uh, what is the, why he played this? Maybe idea is to start uh, some attack immediately and maybe to prepare for Black's long castle. Uh, so move is uh, okay, quite logical. I can't say that uh, move is uh, move is not correct, but uh, uh, there are other moves in the position uh, either. So in knight c six, bishop e two. Knight e7, castle, and f6. I said, normal development would be uh, bishop uh, b7, then castle long, yes, castle long, and then to try start to try to start uh, initiative on the other side. Of course, variation is not easy because especially this bishop on f8 is is stuck, yes, and it doesn't allow to regroup rooks on the back rank to, to g8 and to start some attack on the king side easily and, and fast in the fast mode. But it's it is as it is, what can we say? Uh, but in this moment, Petrosian came to the idea that maybe I will not hurry with Longcastle, maybe I will have idea to, to take on e5. To take on e5, then to play knight g6, attacking this pawn, bishop develops to e7, and short castle immediately, and of course, position will be very, very unclear. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it is some classical mistake, typical mistake for every player, even for world champions, you know. Then when we calculate variations, one of our problems is that usually we, we have a rule with the calculations, that we have to check first to check first all captures yes all captures and attacks yes but in the same time it is classical mistake to calculate automatically captures and recaptures you know and this mistake is you know repeated uh, in in thousands yes so uh, Geller played rookie one like he wants to take on f6 and looks and looks on the on the on the pawn e6 you know or maybe Maybe it is a, it is a target, and Petrosian automatically takes on e5, but it's deadly mistake because he calculated that okay recapture is clear so what? But suddenly he got bishop b5, knight g6. There are other moves like e4, knight e5, queen d6, 
and bishop f4 and terrible jumps of the knight are threatening like knight g6 uh, another option here would be uh, pawn takes d4 knight d4 attack on d6 on e6 queen d6 knight takes uh, knight takes and knight is not sufficiently protected and white use simple tactical method as deflection uh, queen comes to d7 and queen takes on d5 and you see and black position is totally destroyed as it is pinned on the file and black can just resign so petrosian tried to save the day with knight g6 knight takes knight takes and rook takes you see it was very clever for geller to place rook on on e1 to be ready he had a plan as i told you before to hit on on e6 now knight d5 uh, threats uh, bishop bishop d6 uh, can be answered with nothing else as rook rook takes e6 check you know very simple very simple capture and queen e6 bishop takes on c6 as great david bronstein used to teach our uh, young national team chess is a game of double attack he used to say guys always try to find decisive double attack so these lessons uh, which I still remember till to this uh, day. Uh, after the rookie five, he tried to get rid out of this pin. Bishop takes, queen takes, and knight takes on d5. Still pin works. And queen h5 is the threat. If he plays bishop d6, queen h5, then it's possible even queen f3 or knight f6 check to play this terrific attack with very strong uh, threats in this in this position so it was played here bishop d7 bishop g5 uh, bishop d6 check uh, king f8 after after g6 it would be played queen e2 simply and after bishop e5 queen e5 with terrible attack on the on the black squares i don't know what how to save the game at all in this situation so it was played uh, simply uh, uh, sorry sorry it was played here after after bishop g5 aha uh -huh, yes queen h5 king f8 was played queen f3 check king g8 it seems that king improved position a bit but it is one more deflection deflection of the defensive uh, defensive piece bishop d7 is protecting queen c6 and it's necessary to deflect it and in very nice style geller uh, uh, makes queen c6 unprotected after bishop e6 knight e7 check the same just is a game of double attack as used to teach us david bronstein so after rook e6 uh, black played rook f8 and simple realization so one more i want to warn you when we analyze our classical game don't stop saying oh he won two pawns it's automatically easy win no you know how many games uh, were not win with uh, extra piece with uh, two pawns more or we exchange more because we sometimes we forget about this this important rule we have to study realization of the material advantage either and never stop uh, the game okay if just in the case if it is extra uh, rook or extra queen on the board yeah 97 queen takes uh, bishop takes rook f7 okay black still i can't say that have some hopes <laughs> his position is uh, hopeless because white has two extra pawns and on this level uh, it is impossible to save the game but it's necessary to see the realization of geller he doesn't try to keep material advantage he immediately activates the worst piece the piece which is not participating in the game bishop takes a4 b3 bishop c6 and rook 1 e6 continuing attack yeah uh, rook e7 is losing rook e7 then rook takes c7 bishop d5 check rook f8 and rook e7 you see how simply he improves positions now threat is of course rook f8 rook takes c7 h6 take take rook c7 and he is able to use always small tactics in realization 
small tactics is that black cannot now win win the piece because in this time black is losing uh, a rook on h8. So after rook c7 he played king g8 and now simple improvement and creating another coordination of rook and bishop. Threat is bishop e5, so h5, bishop e5 and rook h7. And here of course one more important uh, simple rule uh, of course we most of us know this rule when there are opposite colors uh, bishop on the board be careful and it is rule of Mikhail Botvinnik great rule of uh, Botvinnik which says uh, when there are opposite uh, colors bishop on the board it's very useful to have more pieces more pieces on the board uh, uh, in the case when you are playing for win, when you are trying to make draw, of course, it's necessary to reduce the material as possible, as much as possible. Check, and now simply c4, rook d8, rook check, king e5, of course, here wins everything, rook b6, but still, be careful, and f3, g4, and he plays rook f6. And game, uh, and black uh, finally resigned.